Right. Unless there was a thousand, I read somewhere, a thousand thirty-one new feet of sidewalk that would be in part of that. Is that correct? Yeah, the, uh, the estimate uses a thousand feet. Uh, the sections that I showed you early, earlier, that yeah, was the red about sections. That, yeah, about a thousand feet. Uh, with the addition of uh, that block and a half that we're talking about, um, there would be a little more than that. Yeah. Brandy, did you have... Well, uh, thank you. That huh? answers that question. Um, I just did want to make some general comments. Um, I agree with what just about everybody here has commented on what, that the public process for this, everything leading up to this meeting tonight has been outstanding and um, many efforts made for multiple opportunities for the public to provide input and to discuss that input. And um, while I appreciate what you said, Catherine, about the history and the budget and looking back and all that information being there, I think that the public experience was very different in this process than it was uh, when the decision was made um, to approve the multimodal bridge. And um, I just would like to throw out there, it doesn't have to be a discussion for tonight because I know that's not what tonight is about, but if the council would be open to um, discussing an option to receive some public input, whether it's through a workshop or another means, to reconsider that multimodal bridge versus a bike and pedestrian bridge now that we have a lot of additional information <laughs> that the council that made that decision didn't have at that time. The, the decision was made with um, with what you had at that time. Now we have a lot of information about all these um, corridor improvement options, what the costs would be, what the challenges are to them. Clearly, Plan C is um, preferred by the public, the Transportation Commission, the members of the subcommittee that spent a lot of time on that. But there are still issues with that. And um, if it weren't for the multimodal bridge, we could be considering maybe 100,000, maybe 150,000 for a bicycle pedestrian only bridge, not needing any of these plans, using the $250,000 grant um, to accomplish all these other pedestrian and bicycle safety issues, going perhaps with the more traditional bike lanes like we are in other parts of the city um, versus close to a million dollars. So I just want to suggest that before we go too much farther, we may want to take one more opportunity to be sure that this is really <coughs> the direction that we think is best and that the community wants as far as the outcome and the money spent on it. Art, I'll go to you next. I had an entirely different tack. I was just going to ask under Plan C, uh, even though the streets aren't striped for it or marked for it, about how many parking spaces are lost through that plan? The, um, the parking, as you say, is not currently marked, so it's an estimate at this point, but it looks like approximately 120 spaces along the entire length of the corridor. Any particular hot spots like uh, I know Hayes to Blaine would lose the parking? Yeah, certainly the 30-foot um, you know, section from Polk all the way to Blaine uh, loses all of its parking, and the most heavily used section of that is between Hayes and Blaine where all the apartments are located. Uh, so yeah, that was an area that uh, did raise probably the most concern when it came to parking. And then obviously the, the areas around, you know, city, um, the 1912 building in the high school and any impacts on parking there. So yeah, that was my only real question. The rest falls into the realm of comments later on. Well, well now is as good as now is as good as any. Go ahead and comment what's on your mind, and we'll go to Ann after you're done. Given all of the input that we've had here, uh, Plan C sounds uh, by far superior to the others, but uh, I would also like to. Uh, see, as others have suggested, um, a consultant review to look at uh, the 11 versus 10 and a half foot lanes down towards this end of the corridor. Uh, also, um, the case of uh, how easily Moscow can adapt to the Netherlands or other European areas when it comes to uh, two-way 
uh, sequestered bike lanes, whatever the two-way is, um, and also especially with some attention to uh, what goes on at the cross streets, as Gina pointed out, with the uh, green stripes looking both ways, uh, analogous to uh, trying to pull out of Wendy's sometimes, and here comes a bike sailing the wrong way down the sidewalk at you. It's not what we're used to here. And then when it comes to bikes entering and leaving those protected lanes, um, have the consultant look at that too. There's no reason <coughs> Moscow can't adopt to this, but I, I wonder how many impediments might exist along the way uh, with that one. But um, also as a final coda to that, also getting uh, city staff to contribute to the consultant's report uh, a better estimate on the cost and the time devoted to having to redo the snow and leaf removal and other maintenance issues associated with that. But for sure, uh, getting started on the hardscape, all of the sidewalks, the curbs, the traffic tables, uh, the protected crosswalks, things like that, uh, I think we should proceed directly with those because all of the other things within Plan C versus uh, other options, the uh, misappellated Plan D, uh, amount to uh, paint and uh, other items that are not necessarily going to cost a lot of money on top of. But getting started with the initial stuff so that it coincides with the completion of the bridge, I think, is the way to go with this, with input from the consultant and city staff later on. Okay, yeah. Ann? Yeah. Um, when do you anticipate that we'll have an answer on whether or not we've received funding for the corridor? Boy, that's uh, it's it's a little unknown. the uh, The issue was that the legislature originally, you know, authorized the the funding, but they, as I understand it, did not authorize the expenditure of the funding. That makes sense, and we believe that they've done that now, and so it's really a question of when the agency, which is the local highway technical. Assistance Council, LTAC, um, makes the announcements. And I, I'm really anticipating it any day, um, but I, I don't have a set schedule at this point. Thank you. Um, I would just like to echo Brandy's sentiment that with respect to the one budget hearing that we had over the summer, I think that we all take our jobs very seriously as far as um, serving the public and, and listening to that input. And I think that um, Any time that the public shows an overwhelming um, a desire to, to give us feedback on something, I think it's important to take that seriously and provide that opportunity. And so I'd be interested in, in having that discussion as well. And again, I know that's not what is the topic for tonight, but um, it's something that I'm interested in seeing happen. Well, one thing I'll say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, that multimodal bridge is in the budget. It was put in there six months ago, and it's moving forward uh, as we speak. And so we're looking at um, putting out requests for the proposals to build this thing as part of the budget. And um, what this corridor is about is, sure, it's an enhancement with it, but as one person spoke this evening, I think it's very important the, the city of Moscow gets a chance to step out of the box and do something kind of bold. And I, and I believe that. Look, we've got, we know all the plans we have. There's flaws probably in everything we'd say and do. And we're never going to know until we really do something. And one thing I do know, uh, change is very uncomfortable for most people. And we've seen this through this entire process. And uh, which isn't a bad thing because, you know, I think all of us are susceptible to that. And one of the things I always have truly liked about Moscow, it's been a very vocal community that we've ever been in. But there's one thing about Moscow we do very, very well, and that's solve issues and solve things and move forward and do the next thing. And we're kind of example setters for that, in my view. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. I'd Jim. like to ask a question about... Um, I'm in favor of the Plan C, and I, it's a fabulous unintended positive consequence of getting this whole ball rolling downhill in November of 2016. I never expected to get all these enhancements that make human-powered transportation so much better. 
And so thank everybody for all their efforts to make this all come together. Um, 